trust and obey God. Hmm. Or better, even more personally, I just want to talk about why I serve. This is Thanksgiving, and my favorite holiday of the year <clears throat> happens to be Thanksgiving. And, you know, sometimes Thanksgiving gets, uh, it, it, really, they, it really gets poor billing. Because before I can finish eating my turkey and dressing, cranberry sauce and sweet potato pie and German chocolate cake and lemon squares and all that stuff I love to eat. My barbecue, fried pork chops and all that. Collard greens and candy ams and nasty greens. Before I can finish eating all of that, I got to start singing Deck the Halls. Old Silent Night and chestnuts roasting on a fire. I mean, Thanksgiving just gets blown away. It gets swallowed up in the, the Christmas spirit. There ain't nothing wrong with Christmas. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to mess nobody's Santa Claus up. But, but, but I like Thanksgiving. I like it because it, 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 it it, it's just a time to be grateful for what God has done. I, I like it. If I'm able to eat, it's because he, he has blessed me with food on my table. I, I like it because all my children come around me and get together. We, we just celebrate God's faithfulness over the years. I love it. I love it because truly no one has been as good to me as God has been. And so y'all forgive me. I'm, I, every now and then we always have this, I won't call it, well, uh, well we, we, we have, I have this uh, uh, strong, strong pull and tug to put up Christmas stuff because I live with the quintessential Christmas queen. Amen. But, but I just like this time of Thanksgiving. And so it's most appropriate. It's the last Sunday of the calendar year. If you want to know why I am a believer, it's right here in Revelation chapter you want to know. This letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come from the sevenfold spirit before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests. For God, his father, all glory and power to him forever and forever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Father, speak to us now. Give us understanding. You, you've been so faithful. You brought us all the way from last Thanksgiving to this one. And God, we truly, we truly give your name praise and glory and honor. In our dark days, you brought forth sunshine. In our rainy seasons, Lord, you used the rain to bring forth fruit that we might be revived and 
God, when you saturated the water with the earth with enough water to bring forth new life, you dried it up with your son, and we just want to thank you. God, every trial that came our way in the last year, no matter how difficult, no matter how, how, how much it forced and how it shook us, how it stretched us, how it bended us, God, we thank you. For you strengthened us through them. God, we just want to thank you now. Oh, God, we celebrate your blessings, your goodness, health and strength, God. Family and friends, jobs, God, school. You, you've been so good, God. Everything we've touched this year, you were so kind enough to give. God, even when we were outside of your will, even when we were down on ourselves, even when we went through the valley of depression and the valley of doubt and the valley of fear, God, your hand was there to lift us. So we just thank you now. We praise you for every opportunity you gave us to witness, to see your power, to see your movement, to watch how you transform lives. God, we thank you for showing up on every occasion. Now bless us this day and speak a word to us that we may be filled and God will give your name praise in Jesus name amen one of the <clears throat> observations that I've made in my journey with the Lord is how personal he is with all of us. He's a personal God. He, he meets us right where we are. We don't have to dress up and put on nothing. We don't, we, we don't have to become something. We don't have to grow something to something in order for him to be with us. He, he loves us right where we are doing whatever it is we find our, ourselves doing. Under whatever conditions we find ourselves, he just is personal. He gets right there with you where you are, and he reminds you just how precious you are in his sight. It, look at this. It, it says, this letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you, notice, from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, from the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ. He, he, a letter. A letter. In the midst of all that we're doing in this new age of technology and all of that, my space and your space and my page and your page, you know, all the ways we communicate with all this stuff. There is nothing quite like opening up your mailbox and getting a letter that someone took the time to write just to you. Isn't that something? God loves us so much until Jesus took the time to tell John to write a letter to all of us. Revelation is not a book to be afraid of, but it's a book to read with, with this insight that it's just for us, just for you. God does not want any of us to be, be, be all worried and, 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 and frustrated and anxious 
about life. So he gives us this book, this book of Revelation so that we will know that he is still with us. And I love it. It comes in the form of a letter. A letter. Takes the time. And he writes specifically to all of us. Doesn't matter what's going on around us. We're living in days, as we said last week, that seem as if this world is in its fourth quarter. We don't know. But, but, the, but, but the more I hear stuff come out of this administration of 45, the, the, the more I'm alarmed about just how close it may be to this day. And, and so I'm not going to be so distracted by the lights, the boxes that will be under the Christmas tree. Not, not going to allow now the, 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 that sweet aftertaste of turkey and coconut pie, and banana pudding. To, to cause me to lose sight of the fact that, 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 that God is doing something around us. And, and so today, as we pause after celebrating Thanksgiving, we, we've got this letter. And, and, and this letter identifies for us who our faith must be in. Look what he says. He is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all kings of the world. This is a portrait of the Christ, the one we believe in, the one we trust in. And it's, it's, it's pregnant with potential for us to live by. It's, it, it, it's, it's overflowing with enough authority in it for us never to be insecure ever again. And I'll, look what he says to us. He is the faithful witness of these things. Now, he's talking primarily that Jesus died, but he's not dead. Oh, glory. A man who was dead took time to write us a letter. Doesn't that blow your mind? He who died for us, his blood was shed for us. And after he got up, since, 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 since we weren't back there, we weren't, we weren't back there when, when those 12 and the others saw him and witnessed him. We, we were not there when Thomas put his finger in, in, in the holes in his hands and, and put his, thrust his hand hand in his side. We weren't there. So, so what the Lord has done so that we can have that same faith is he took time to send us a letter. Oh, what he must think of us. Oh, how he must love us. He sends us a letter. Now, now in my my 40 some odd years of ministry, I've had the, the responsibility of homegoing celebrations and conducting them for a whole lot of folk. But not one of them, after we said ashes to ashes and dust to dust, has ever sent me a letter. Isn't that awesome? So, so, so my faith is based upon the reception of a letter from someone who once was dead. But dead folk don't write letters. <laughs> so so this, this, this book is a testimony that he is alive. My Lord. Hmm. Notice now, it, it, it points me to what I should 
see to make me happy. All glory to him. All glory to him. I don't care how much I love all of you. And God knows I do. My glory and my praise is not to you, but it's to my God. I don't want anything to come between me and my God. I don't want nothing to become so important to me that I turn away from giving him glory, giving him honor, giving him praise. I, I, I worship him because he's worthy of all my praise. He woke me up this morning. He, he, he gave me activity of my limbs, and, and, and he gave me a mind to think, and he gave me hands to work with, and he gave me feet that I might walk. Oh, I give him glory because I am who I am by the grace of Almighty God. All glory to him who loves us. If anyone here is looking for love, y'all with me? Anybody here looking to get, as that songwriter said, booed up? Let me just invite you to make Jesus your boo. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm booed up today. <laughs> All filled up. Because I found somebody who loves me. Oh, glory. He loved me so much until he freed me from my sin. Oh, oh I'm up here standing as, as chief cook and, 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 and as, the, as, as those would call me pastor. But, but I want you to know something. He, he loved me enough that he took care of my sins because don't get it wrong, I got Faults and problems just like everybody else. Don't, don't think for a minute that I don't make mistakes. Don't think for a minute that I may not have thoughts that are not right. But, but I thank God that he loves me enough. He, he loves the sin out of me. Ooh use that one the next time you want to use that euphemistic expression. He loves the sin out of me. Next time someone tries to put you on a guilt trip, you need to let them know, I found somebody who loves me. And he loved the sin out of me. <laughs> oh, it'll become a conversation piece. It might give you an opportunity to testify about the goodness of the Lord. You, you may be able to go back and tell your story about who you were and what you were before you met him. But then when you met him, he, he changed your life. Freed us from our sin. But it wasn't cheap. Just free. But it wasn't cheap. Ooh -wee. Free gift. Free part. But it wasn't cheap. It cost him something. His blood. Oh, that's what I love. I love how we sing together. And I'm so glad that God has freed me from all of the the stuff that goes into traditional worship and pastoral form 
because I love to sing. One of the greatest joys I have is to come to church on Sunday morning and stand up there and celebrate and praise God with the rest of my brothers and sisters because he's so good. I'm not shackled down by where I'm supposed to be, where I need to sit, what I need to wear. No, no, I come like all of you to worship him and give him praise. Because he shed his blood just for me. And I want to let you know I'm not going to be so proud, so stuck up, and nothing else, so holy that wherever I am, I'll forget just how good he's been to me. Well, now, so we can go home. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God, his father. Here it is. He gives us something to do. This term, priest, we often put it up on a pedestal. But I want to let you know that Every one of us in here is a priest or priestess. Because what a priest does is a priest is a representative of the God whom they serve. So what he says to us now is he has given us something to do. After the benediction, it's up to us to leave here empowered by God's spirit and, and driven by his love to go out there and, and represent God and allow folk to see how good God is in our lives as we share one with another. We are now his priests. Now, if you just sit with that and a cup of coffee, a glass of Kool-Aid, small glass of sherry and think it over. This responsibility to be a priest, it'll change your attitude. It'll help you to look at people and things differently. It, it will curb your appetite for unrighteous things and it will increase your appetite for things that be of God. When you become a priest and see that you've got a responsibility to, to, ex to, to exhibit what you claim to believe in. Now all of a sudden you can't say anything you want to say. You can't take part in everything everybody else is taking part. All of a sudden you realize that there are some standards that God has and I can't afford to allow my relationship with God to be compromised because I am a You know, if you stand, I, I got one person in here I can have stand right now. And that individual looks a whole lot like me. She is my baby girl. Now, if you happen to be a child of God, Shouldn't you? Look a little bit like your father. If you just happen to be God's child, shouldn't you talk sometimes like your God's child? If you happen to be a child of God, shouldn't you think and act like God wants you to act? Well, when we get the perspective, you 
see here, the benediction is in order. The benediction. Now, now don't miss the benedictions because the benediction is a blessing that are supposed to walk out the door with you. You don't leave the benediction inside the church. You, woo, you let the benediction <laughs> grab your arm. And, and, and it's supposed to walk with you outside. Look at the benediction. From here on in, when we leave here, all glory, all power is to him forever and ever. And the church has to say, Amen. We can go home now. Nothing else needs to be said. If you came here today and you don't know him for yourself, somebody sitting next to you knows him. Talk with them and they will help you have some understanding because we are a body of believers in Jesus Christ. And he is our God. And we are his church. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm through, y'all. But there is still room for prayer. Let us remember Brother Warren going through. Right now, he's in pain. So we've got to remember him in prayer. We've got some here who's lost loved ones. We're praying for you today. For Sammy. The rest of us woke up on Friday and one of his cousins was on a counterfeit. So he has to go into that situation. So many around us, if we aren't sick, we know somebody who is. So it's prayer time. We come to this altar. We come with the assurance that our God hears and answers prayer. Our Bible tells us, be not anxious for anything at all. But in every situation, in every one of them, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace, the shalom of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. Happy are those whose minds are stayed upon him. He keeps them in perfect peace because they trust in him. Oh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Is there one standing in the need of prayer? Is there one seeking a resolution, a solution? Is there one standing in the need of an open door, an opportunity for growth, for development, for movement? Our word, our Bible tells us he is a very present help in a time of need. Do you know somebody who, whose mind whose heart has been captured by 
everything but the will of God. Did you know that if they could just surrender and place it in God's hands, if they could just get to know him better, and you want to pray for them that God might use someone, including yourself, to crack open that seal, unlock that heart, that it might be delivered. The altar is open. Whosoever will, hold that hurt, let him come. Mm -hmm.